you can run small large language models entirely within Kaggle, and that's commonly done for many of these competitions. If you look through Kaggle, you'll see many notebooks that make use of this technique. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So notice here, I have my notebook open in GitHub, just, just like all the others, but notice how I have open in Kaggle instead of open in Colab like you normally see. I don't know, I'm tempted to put maybe both of those buttons across all of the notebooks for this course. I'm not sure if Kaggle would be necessarily the ideal environment, but something I'm thinking about. Let me know, what do you think in the comments? So let's go ahead and push the button. I'm pushing that, and you'll see that it pops open my notebook in Kaggle. Now one thing that is a little different, you have to have your notebook already saved in Kaggle and published, whereas Colab, it just, it just pulls it from GitHub and pops it open. So anyway, here is my notebook. If anybody wants to give me an upvote in Kaggle, that's, that's ultra cool. So before we jump into the code, Let's go ahead, I am going to, you would probably want to do copy and edit. I think there's, there'd be something like that for you, but I actually own this one. So I can click edit, and then it takes me into this edited mode. You'll see save version is, is here. I published one version so far. I'll probably publish another version when I go through and link all the videos on these. I can't do it yet because they're not uploaded to YouTube yet. But you'll see over here is some very important things, just, just like before. You can also add models as input. Now, I actually didn't add that model because Gemma that I am using, it's smart enough, or actually the, uh, the, the framework that I'm using to load it is smart enough to actually add it for me. So you may or may not need to add these depending on what model you're doing. And you can add multiple models. So if I do add input, it considers a model an input. And I look on models. Here you can see all of the models that it supports. And there is, there's quite a few. There's even more than, than what you're seeing here. But these are the primary ones. There's 6,257 different models here. So... Gemma is a very popular one. That's from Google. That's similar. It's like the small version of Gemini. Uh, they, they do have Mistral in here. The thing that you're going to be running into, though, is not... You'll, you might well need to make the model even, even smaller when you're loading it in, just because you don't have infinite RAM here, and e even with GPU. So I'm gonna close that because the model's already added from when I ran it before. I'm running this with no accelerator. A GPU definitely makes this considerably faster and in some cases can let you have load bigger models in. Kaggle gives you the usual GPUs and also a TPU. Programming languages, Python, I'm not using persistence. That can be helpful sometimes, and uh, the, the internet is on. Some competitions require you to leave the internet off. And leaving the internet on, you can then use the, like OpenAI, the API-based large language models that are running entirely outside of Kaggle. But here, let's see how to run one of these completely within Kaggle. So the usual stuff that I have up here to let, to let it work nicely with a collab, I've replaced with some Kaggle specific instructions. So we're going to run this. This is going to install the Kaggle, uh, the Keras NLP that we're going to utilize. You can use a variety of backends for this. Let's go ahead and fast forward through this while it makes those necessary loads. Okay, that is loaded. So now we're going to access, and this is more of the framework. This is not anything specific to Gemma. This will support multiple, not all, but multiple of those, those models. 
You can read about the Gemma LLM here, or certainly Google it. It's a, it, it is a Google-based um, model, somewhat along the Gemini line, but not nearly as powerful as Gemini. We're using JAX as the back end. We could also use TensorFlow or Torch. Multiple reasons you would pick that. JAX seems to be seems to be pretty pretty decent. I'm going to go ahead and run this part. This takes a moment to run, and this is where you would see this pop up over here as it downloaded those weights. We'll just fast forward through this. This is going to take a bit. All right. Now we can actually prompt it. So let's use what is the meaning of life. For some reason, they like to use this on a lot of the Gemmas, the, the, the Gemma examples. So this does take a moment. You'd want to use GPU to certainly make this faster, uh, but be aware the GPU is a limited resource on Kaggle. All right, it is complete. What is the meaning of life? Gemma does tend to repeat the prompt. The question is one of the most important questions in the world. It's the question that has been asked by philosophers, theologians, scientists for centuries. And it's a question that has been asked by people who are looking. So. It, it, it does not answer. All right, thank you for watching this video. And this is a technique you'll probably use in the Kaggle competition for this class. You may not use Gemma. You might want to certainly experiment with some of the others. I'm very curious to see what you come up with there. Thank you for watching this video and please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.